good, family? From the Facebook group Life, Love, and Relationships, T-A-D-S. You're tuning in to the hottest Facebook live show on the book. It's the After Dinner Snack. Hey, what's up? What's up? You were broadcasting live from Premium Jungle Studios. It's the After Dinner Snack. I'm your boy, Tom Swoop. It's been a minute, but we back. We back. And we are in the studio live with... Uh, my two co-hosts for the evening. Ladies, could you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, I am LaToya. Let Toya? Oh gosh, yes. Go ahead, um, young lady. Hello, I'm Shayla. Shayla. <laughs> Gorier. We did this already, do, right? Yeah, I gotta do all of that. Yeah, do it again. Most of them know me. I don't need no introduction. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Your okay. last name, Gorier? Gorier. I like that. It's like Thank a you. smooth it's, drink. It's French. It's French. Oh, okay. It's French. What kind of drink we talking about there, Chitoya? That would make there a we nice, go. Dark, that a nice no, Merlot. Merlot. There you go. A nice Merlot. A nice Merlot. <laughs> hey, so today's topic for today is friends versus associates. What are they? We want you to call in 216-800-7222. Tonight on the after dinner snack, friends versus associates. What's your quick? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set the stage. Friends versus associates. Okay, I'm good and old, so mm -hmm. I guess my idea is a lot different. What I, you know, what really brought it to, to me wanting to do this show tonight was, you know, I, I talked to my son, and my son's 19, and I hear him include people into his life so easily. And the amount of power, pressure, whatever you want to call it, that he gives is just like, I just be like, dude, what is you doing? That's 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 not your friend. You know, you met him at the gym like last week. Y'all hooped together. Mm -hmm. Y'all just teammates at a pickup game. That's not your friend. You know what I'm saying? No, dad, you don't understand. That's that's my woe. Like, yo, woe? Yo, woe? So, but then I see adults my age who do the same thing. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to you guys. You you tell me how you personally feel. Latoya, you up first. How do you feel about friends versus associates? Like, I mean, have you struggled with this? You know, give me your definition. You know, break it down for me one time. Dope hat, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I think the difference with like friends and associates, I think friends are someone that who knows you, who's there for you, who's someone you can count on who will tell you the truth when you need to be told the truth someone who's there through the good and the bad who will love you past your faults and still care for you um i think associates basically i consider associates as people who that i have something in common with and we have a common ground with a circum certain circumstance or whatever um say like if we like uh, worked out together um we have that is that's the base of our relationship is us working out together and we might have stuff in common but that doesn't consider you i don't consider you as a friend we just have something in common so that's what i consider an associate so miss shayla gorier gorier it's french everyone are you done yeah i'm done go okay. ahead <laughs> uh so first i gotta start off by saying i have five best friends see i feel like right there you're wrong like i feel like that's just entirely too many best friends I when it, and when somebody your age, your age young lady, says that they have five best friends, you got one best friend and you got some girls you cool with. To me, to you, okay. To me, can I finish? To me, go ahead. Okay, so my newest best friend I've known ten years. Um, all five of them because I carry a lot emotionally. I can dump anything on them those five like they know everything about me everything the way you do actually okay. they know everything um and i've never had any type of issues i've been friends with these girls all these years never fell out never had any type of like distrust money issues nothing like those are the five people i know out of my friend circle which is bigger than a circle i guess but they will always have my back and they won't betray me in any type of way so um, so let me ask you this question just mm -hmm. just because i hear you say you have five best friends mm -hmm. so like do those five 
best friends know that they're best friends and then the yes and then they battle over who's my bestest friend okay so and they talk what about a, what the about fact the that people, i have so many what about the people who think they're in the five they shouldn't they shouldn't no they shouldn't because i make it's clear it's clear it's clear there's no blurred lines no blurred lines now people assume for example you know danny Everybody assumes Danny is my best friend because me and Hold Danny on. are together all Hold the time. On. Danny is a business partner of Miss Gorier's. Um, they. I was um, gonna get to that. Go ahead. I just wanted to break it down for everybody. So they're you talking about Danny? Like they're about to be? Oh yeah, I know Danny. <laughs> if they know me, they know Danny. But, um, yeah, she like I was gonna say she's my business partner. I've known her six years. We do business together, but we hang out a lot, like almost a, on a daily basis. But she's not um, your best friend. But she's not my best friend. No. She's, no. she's an I call associate. Her, I call her my everyday bitch. So she's your associate? No. She, I, this, well, this is my thing. Hey, you I, said I, friends versus uh, associates. Like, those are the only two categories a person can have oh, in your so life. Oh, so we have more. So, so oh, for, oh. To me, for dun, example. Dun, 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 dun. You can have friends and you can well, have a best for, friend. I, yeah, there's, there's people that I haven't seen in years. And I might be like, oh, yeah, my friend such and such. Just in talking, I, I use the f- term friend loosely i would never call somebody an associate like if i hung around you mm-hmm. say we've been okay so we've been around each other now twice but really barely say we actually really hung out around time maybe five more times if somebody was saying i like oh you know Toya, oh yeah my friend toya i know toya like mm-hmm. i would say that in uh not like we know each other's secrets or each other's lives but being like, oh yeah, she's an associate. I just, it's such a clinical. See, you know, that's, that's, that, that's true. That's a stigma. Almost, that's, that's true. A, I've never, the word I is never stig- called anybody but an the, associate. The it's word almost is a dis- stigma. I would be offended if somebody called me that. Just say my, just be like, oh yeah, that's Shayla. You don't have to. You just like, I know her. Don't call me an associate. I, it's almost. But that's what exactly what some of these people are. Like I, I worked, I worked, I had a job. Most people don't. Thing. They think I'm Tommy from Martin, but <laughs> I used to have a job and I used to have to be there every In day. In the 80s. Or stop it. Oh no, I used so, to have one job that I So know. I had a job and I had to be there every day and I worked with these guys every day for years. And when I quit that job, I didn't talk to those guys anymore. Like I may see them once in a while in the city, you know what I'm saying? But you know, but but we were working 14 16 hour days together. We talked all the time. You know what I'm saying? We called each other on Christmas. We called it, you know what I'm saying? But now that I don't work there. They you know, were your friend for a moment. It's not like you they guys. They were never fell my out. friends. Really? You they were on holidays? They were never my friends. Mm, they, they, were associates. They, they were my associates. We were friends out of circumstances. Mm-hmm. So that's not a friendship. Really? That's true. You know what I'm saying? So those were truly my associates. And I, I learned that as an adult. Mm-hmm. And I, right now, today, we're doing this show because I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to teach <laughs> you young ladies and young men that these people are not your friend. They are associates. Like the relationship you just explained with you and Danny, you guys are associates with benefits. <laughs> associates you're, with benefits? You are associates listen, with benefits. Listen, my kids sleep at her house. Her kids sleep at my house. Okay, y'all might be friends. Yeah, like her, <laughs> her, she told her one daughter, like, you're not my favorite kid. And her daughter was like, it's okay. I'm Shayla's favorite. Okay, y'all might be friends. Yeah, we're friends. Okay, definitely. So y'all sound like y'all, you know, swap draws everything. So no, def- Danny don't wear draws. <laughs> no. <point>. Wow. So <laughs> Danny's business is fully out in the street fully right out. now. Welcome to our another co-host, Danny. Uh, <laughs> Danny's I like on the show today. Embarrass Danny. She knows it. She so right with it. I mean, so okay, friends versus associates. We we talk about it so loosely, and like like Latoya was saying, and I I, I piggybacked on that the word associates has a stigma to it. So you've got to call a cat a cat at some point, right? So why does the word uh, associates have a stigma? Why is the word friend too friendly? Mm. That's, that's real. That should be a t-shirt. <laughs> well, I'm just saying because you can have somebody that's a friend and then somebody that's like, oh, this is my friend, friend. Like you have different people for d- different things. Like out of my five best friends, I'll probably tell them all, Something that happens, like if it's some major thing in my life, I'll tell them all, but I have certain friends I go to for certain things. And it's not that one thing would be more important than another, but like my one friend is really, really good in business. I would go to her for business things. You know what I'm saying? If I have Mm -hmm. business advice, I'm not going to go to my best friend that's a housewife. She's going to be like, girl, Right. you know what I'm saying? So it's just like you kind of, you have people that feel different needs in your life. 
And so I don't have a problem calling anybody a friend because you're a friend to me until you're not a friend. Like, and, and you know what? Maybe that's my hippie upbringing. You do have to realize that but I was raised I, in I Berkeley. Just, I mean, I wow, you just say that. But listen, at the end of the day, it's like when you, you're basically segmenting friends when you really have friends and associates. So are we getting caught in verbiage? Or are we really giving these titles and these, these, you know, these sections, at if you will? You know what I'm saying? Because basically what you just said was, I got friends, but I call them friends, but really they're associates. I didn't say that. I said no, I can no, go to them for certain things that I rely on one for something Okay, that so I don't. are we still talking about the five? Let's just call them the Furious Five from the rest of the show. Okay. So Shayla has five friends. And then best those five. Friends, best friends. Jesus, he is a redeemer. Listen, so you got five friends. So out of those five friends, everybody's on the same level. In my life, like in order of importance to me? Yes. Yes. I have to say that because one would kill me if yes. I didn't. You're on the show and people are watching, so you're saying things. Toya, what do you feel about what she just said? Go ahead and say it. Um, Call bullshit right now. Go ahead. What? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I see. I see what she's saying. Where where she says she has like the five or whatever. But um, I think that with me, um, I have different groups of friends. Go ahead. Tori. Um, I have some friends that I go to church with. I have yes. some friends that I don't go to church with, and then I have a best friend that um, that I just I met Britain probably about uh, I want to say like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Um. But then I have my one friends that I like been friends with since like I was in my twenties, you know. So I think it's just like different categories. Is it wording all... though? Like, cause obviously some people are really good friends to you, and some people are really good associates to you. Why do they have to be called associates though? But the stigma doesn't change the category. That's exactly where they need to be. You know what Why I'm saying? Why do they need to be there? Because, but that's how would you be with associates for so long, though? Like I, like I just explained, I was with You're those guys man. for over ten years. We worked all the time together, but they were really my associates. They were. But y'all was y'all relationships was based on you working there. circumstances. So you have people that you're friends with at your job, correct? Um, they're associates <laughs> at my job. Oh my god! <laughs> so you don't have any friends at your job? They they're associates. I, I can I thought that I had some friends at my job, but I consider people at my job associates. That means there's been mess at the job. Yes, there's yeah. been mess. There's, mm -hmm. there's I been so, drama. Miss Toy, I got a question. Mm -hmm. You call her Miss. Go ahead. Keep going. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You say Miss like she's on Well, because I didn't <laughs> I didn't say Latoya and her nickname is Toya and I can't call her Toya because I'm not her friend like that. So <laughs> I said Toya. Miss Toya. Yeah. <laughs> We're friends. She just doesn't know each other. Okay, so my question. Your best friend of eight years, is she saved too? Yeah. Okay, so you guys can, you can go to her with pretty much anything? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what when you, I met her, she wasn't. She wasn't. Like, so saved. you guys have heathen? that common. Shut up. Was she a heathen? Don't answer that. Is she still a heathen? What's her name again? <laughs> You know her name, Brittany. Brittany is a heathen? You just sit? She is not a heathen. Okay, go ahead. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know Whatever. that. Whatever. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Check. I just wonder because, like, they're, like my, my one best friend that lives in Charlotte, we've been friends mm -hmm. since we were 17. She's, like, married and responsible. You know, she's a person with four Christmas trees and mm -hmm. coupons. Um, When I go have ratchet fun, that's not the person I call the next day, like, Girl, listen, let me tell you. Did you see my Snapchat? Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, did you see such and such? Like, I, she's not the person that I'm going to call and do that because she is going to dog me to mm -hmm. my face. Like, what is wrong with you? You old. You need to mm -hmm. sit down. Like, she's that friend. So, I don't, I, you know what I mean? So, I just wonder, like, if your best friend was, like, saved, too. So, you know Yeah, I mean? she, she, she's, she became safe. Um, but they had big ratchet fun, too, though. Well, see, me yeah, and her, we I, had... I, our, our phone wasn't really ratchet. We were, like, PG-13, but we were 17. But, like, LaToya, like, real ratchet. Like, y'all don't know that. What? How am I ratchet? Hey, you extra no. ratchet. Explain yourself. Right now? Yes. No. How am I extra ratchet? Hold on, let me put the camera on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I don't 
don't even look like I would be ratchet. Come Absolutely. on, it definitely now. doesn't. What does that have to do with the price of beans in China? Man, like, come on, don't play me. I mean, so you telling me you could tell somebody who looked ratchet by just walk, walking down the street? Yes, yeah, sometimes you can. I mean, if yes, she got can. a if she got on a fluorescent quick weave or something like that, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, she get it in. But I can't just look at you and be like, yeah, she ratchet or yeah, she's not ratchet. I can't do that. Sometimes you, you guys can. Are Sometimes very you can. judgmental. Extremely, I am. I say very. you look loose. What? You look loose. Loose. <laughs> loose. Listen, Big facts. Listen, she just... You have a whole thought beard over there. <laughs> somebody ratchet. I'm just saying. You said beard legion. A whole thought beard. <laughs> Grease it up before you get on camera. Hold on. You said a thought beard. Thought beard. A oh. thought beard. Okay. You know right. what he was doing? He was growing dimensions. <laughs> Are y- y'all done yet? Okay. Y'all done yet? Like, y'all got the comment section jumping right now. I just want to <laughs> let y'all know that. But, yeah, a thought beard. I have a thought beard. You do. Okay. All right. You're ratchet. I know that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. I am a hybrid. I am ratchet and sophisticated. I can do it both. Okay. Well, real quick, I do want to throw this out there to everybody. Uh, join our Facebook group, Life, Love, and Relationships, TADS. Um post some stuff, you know, get in there, jump in the, conver- the conversation, look at all the stuff we got going on in there. We actually do have a couple events coming up. Still working on all the details before I put it out there to the public. But once again, join our Facebook group, Life, Love, and Relationships, TADS. <laughs> what is this? What? What? He definitely I'm not was on grabbing camera. the air. I'm not oh. on camera. <laughs> Calm down. Grandmother and grandmother. Goodness. <laughs> so back to the topic of the day. Friends versus relationships. I, I see you. I see the tale of two toys is not happening on this show. We getting a, we getting Toya from the beginning all the way to the end today. She got she all gassed up today. Whatever. No, I'm just the type of person. It takes me time to loosen up. I just don't come out and just be aggressive. I like to sit back and be observant. Then I get comfortable. Then I just be me. Mm. Hey, that's what she said. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Hey, all right, so friends friends versus associates. And obviously we've gotten to a part of the show where the stigma of the word fr- uh, associates is, is that a woman thing or a guy thing? Because I'm starting to think it's a woman thing because mm-hmm. I'm cool I with somebody so. being like, yeah, I know Tom, that's, you know, that's cool. He's my associate. We, we, we've done things together, but we're not friends. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool with that. Whereas you guys were obviously like, you know, y'all be pretty much was like, be please. You know what I'm saying? We associates, we associates now for real. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't call my phone no more. I think I I think I will be more like, you know, like I know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like Shayla, I'll be like, I know Shayla, you know, we did a show together or something like that. But I wouldn't be like, she associate. Like I just wouldn't. Yeah. I just be like where I know her from. But see that if if that's what it is, that's what it is. Why, why can't we just let it be what it is? Like we almost tiptoeing around the verbiage of it. Okay. Not to be on a race or anything, but who, who, you know, black be like, Oh, that's my associate. I say it all the time. Like, do you? I've never heard. I've never heard heard you say that. Listen. Okay. All right, so Carla's not like here. He calling us his Carla's not here. Right. Hey, big shout out to Carla Jackson. She is in uh, Israel right Hi, now. Carla. Hey, Hi, Carla. Hey, Carla. I hope y'all watching the show. But listen, so now they're going to tag team on me, but this is not going to work because time is built for tag teaming. So listen, that's what she said. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, all right, why y'all stuck on verbiage? Like, go ahead. Um, I feel like you're the only person stuck on verbiage. And, and l- listen, I'm explaining this in the way that I know how, Go ahead. which is right. I feel like men compartmentalize everything. Like y'all <sighs> compartmentalize your feelings oh and gosh. all these other things. So you've compartmentalized, oh, okay, this person is my real friend. This is my A1. I've known these people 10 years. They probably know me on a behavioral standpoint better than most of my friends. But because I don't talk to them anymore, they're no longer my my friends their associates and then you convince yourself that they always were associates somehow but y'all have been around each other every single day for a decade you gave a decade of your life to these people and you stuck on calling them an associate that's weird like you you need a hug thomas 
No, it's not weird because I call you my friend. You, you know better. what I'm saying? And I I haven't known you 10 years. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So it is what, and, and we're not tied together by any circumstance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to see you, but I, I call you. You know what I'm saying? That's what I feel like. That's where you find friendship. Right. When, and that's understandable, but I just think that getting so caught up on the title of calling somebody an associate, you're saying like we're obsessed with the, the verbiage the opposite way, but you are too because you feel the need to have to call somebody an associate instead of just being like, it's different too. Because like, okay, so like you said, somebody asked you if you know me, you're like, oh yeah, I know her. We did, you know, a show together mm-hmm. or whatever. We was at game night together. Um, But if somebody was like, oh, is that your friend? Then I think it would be appropriate to be like, well, you know, like an associate, like we cool. We not, you know what I'm saying? Right, Enemies. Right, right. Then I think it's okay to say that, but I feel like right. to go out of your yeah. way to to separate a person, friend, associate, just on a title standpoint is weird. Carla said, "Hey, I miss hey, Carla. Carla. Hey, but okay, so okay, so, but back to Toya. So like, what am I associate to you? No, you're my friend. Oh, you're, okay. you're my friend. I like raised you, so it's like, yeah, <laughs> you, I, you know, I, oh, I kind of feel, oh. I kind of feel ownership when it comes to you. Oh, like no. even your so walking like Christ, I feel bill. like Wait I brought you ownership. to the water. You know what I'm saying? So listen, don't play me. No, but the why thing, are we always on the show? You trying to play me? I've never like, tried to play try you. Don't play me. You, Just every you time you raised me, raised you up. But listen, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but look, it, I do feel like what you said previously was the truth. Now, after Shayla said what she said. I go back to what you said. I do feel like it's a cultural thing. I do feel like it's a cultural thing. I feel like, you know, African-American people of color, this is, I feel like this is our hurdle because I've been around white people and they've been like, oh yeah, I know Tim, he's, you know, it's my associate. You know, I, I've, I've heard that. Mm-hmm. Whereas you're right. I have not heard black people say that. And it is a stigma in the black community. So Okay, how do we get over it now since we've identified the problem? <laughs> so right, but, like, but what makes it a problem, though? I don't think it's a problem. So why did you make a whole show about it? Because people are blurring the lines. Yeah, well, I think it's a, a thing of treatment more than it is a title. It's the same thing like a relationship. I, I think I think you have a point, though, because when people consider people their friends and then when they hurt them. Exactly. They're not really your friend because your friend wouldn't hurt you the way that a a friend would hurt you. They would hurt mm. you hurt you like an associate. And I think that's that's where the problem is. We don't draw the line and people get hurt. Like cause like for instance, like at my job, I have went through it with some girl and I consider her a friend. And um then when I sat back and thought about it and just kind of, you know, check myself, self awareness and what I did and what she did and stuff, and I said, you know what? Maybe she's not my friend. Maybe she's an associate. Mm-hmm. So, and then just seeing other people and and the reactions of other people, because the the reactions that I got was not what a friend would give mm-hmm. to me. And so that's why I consider not having a friend at work. Um, and so I was like, you know, I was drawn to my friends instead of like work people because those are people who know me mm-hmm. and. My friends, they don't they don't tell me yes all the time. They challenge me, they encourage me, they support me, but they help me to grow. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's what I consider my friend. Now you exposed um something. All right. So when we have these friend associate relationships and we get to a point where a friend does something like you said mm-hmm. an associate would do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you're hurt or they cut you or they, you know, bite the hand that feeds them, when they do anything that is different, they basically ask for a title at that point. Right, right, right. You know, they're like, they're like, I'm if you're not going to define our, our relationship, I'm going to define it by my actions. Mm-hmm. So now you got this person who, you know, you thought was a friend who becomes an associate, but then you got history with them. So it's mm-hmm. like those memories that you have with them, you can't mm-hmm. throw them out. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, it's right. like you dealing with this person is at the same time. It's that's why I said. But I think another thing too, we we use that word so loosely. Yes, we use it very loosely, and I think that, um, like they say, you have a friend, you have some friends that come in your life for a reason, a season, and then for a lifetime, and that's true. And we have to be willing to be able to um, be okay with that friend coming for a reason. 
I'm sorry. Coming for a reason and then going about their business. You know what that's I'm saying? What, that's what we don't do. No. That's we, what we don't do. We don't. We don't do that. We don't let people come in, do what they're supposed to do. It's like it's like anybody. If you have a vendor who needs to come fix something, let them fix it. You don't like I I I have went I went and done photography, you know, and I understand a wedding is a very special day for a couple, but like they be like, um, yeah, give us the deal or you know you know we not friends. I need my check. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I in mean, business, that's completely. I, I'm here for the check. Listen, even yeah. my friends pay full price for a T-shirt. Yes, they they yeah. don't ask for no discount. They be like, no, I'm giving you a full friend price. wouldn't. A, a, friend friend would. a true yeah. friend wouldn't. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. Well, and to touch on what you said about like uh, a friend that you thought was a friend and them hurting you like an associate would, I I don't feel like even an associate should have that type of allowance you know what i mean mm -hmm. sometimes a person because it's if it's real to you like i i think too the reason why i'm so open with friends i haven't had a lot of betrayals from friendships um but i have had a couple um but out of the i feel like the out of how many friends i have having like three people that i thought were friends or even love like family mm -hmm. betray me i just kind of okay it, it is what it is mm -hmm. but they're just a bad friend. I don't even think I would even put them into an associate category at that because, like you said, there's history now. Mm -hmm. So you know things about me. You Even if I didn't go into my deepest, darkest, I gave mm -hmm. you a part of me. Mm -hmm. And now that you've shown me the type of friend that you are, because some people don't know how to be friends. Mm -hmm. Now you've shown me the type of person that you are, I'm done with the situation, but I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, that person was an associate. No, that person used to be my friend. Or that oh, yeah, person I would used say to she used to be my friend, my but family. now she's in considered right. An associate. And so for me, for category. me, like when it comes to a person that I guess that you could call an associate, somebody that, like you said, like a work person or a work buddy or whatever, like mm -hmm. you betray me. I I'm expecting you to conduct yourself like a friend, and the reason I can I say that is because hurting people, backstabbing, doing that kind of stuff. Those are character flaws. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No matter who I am to you, if even if I'm a stranger to you, you shouldn't want to do those things to me. Right, mm -hmm. right, so right. I just feel like those are just fucked up people in general. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So mm -hmm. I don't look at it like a, from a friend standpoint. Like I've had people who like this one girl, she had my kids when I was in the hospital, like having my other kids. She had, you know what I mean? Mm hmm. Are we not friends? Are we not like family? Because we've had this type of relationship to where I trust you enough to have my kids when I'm giving birth. Mm -hmm. And then you go sleep with somebody that you know is my situation. Mm -hmm. Like, who does that? Yeah. That's not something an associate so, would do. So when you when, yeah. when you, you know what I mean? when you replay that situation, like, where do you feel like you put her in a position she wasn't qualified for? No, I feel like I was genuine to a person who wasn't genuine back. Mm -hmm. And um, the lesson that I learned in that is that you have to pay attention to people's their I don't want to say their need for you but um, their agenda I feel like yes agenda because I feel like in a lot mm -hmm. of ways she lived vicariously through my marriage she lived vicariously through my relationship with my kids how other people love me and I think I really felt like like you know everybody says somebody's jealous of them mm -hmm. but going from that relationship and then sleeping with my on again off again partner and then, and you knew who he was to me and you pretended like, oh, well, he said that they broke up. Why, what made that acceptable for you to do? Because we broke up. Right. You know, you know what I mean? another thing too, we need to take in consideration, what's everybody's definition of a friend? Yeah. Everybody has different relationship of a friend. Yeah. Even when people say like, I love you, it could be totally different than mm -hmm. what you think yeah. is I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this girl still to this day tell me she loved me. How? How do you love me? Now, now you had brought something up when you had said previously in what you had said about family. So when you get into this and then you add the family component. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll say on the record that my closest people are into to me are in my family that I consider my best friends. Like you, everybody's seen like the quote, like cousins are always your first best friend mm -hmm. and, and and i do like i like i have two cousins that are literally like brothers that i did not have growing up and one we're really close and the other one we're off again on again close but once you when your family and then you make that switch of uh the betrayal 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but then your family. So mm-hmm. it's like, do you get through it because you family? Or do you cut them off forever just like they were a friend? It depends on the circumstance. Yeah, and it depends on what happened. It depends on, I mean, there's so many different factors with that. But I, you know that quote that blood makes you related, loyalty makes you family? Mm-hmm. I swear by that. It's people that I consider family that have no blood relation to me. But that's how it be. A family is a family is put together. Your friends are picked. Yeah. You don't have no control over who you're that's related a t-shirt. to. That is a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's a t-shirt. But when you when you that family component for me is always one that personally I feel like I've struggled with in my life because like some of the closest people to me though like aren't family. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or their you know maybe a mentor or something like that somebody like that whereas some of my family members have been the ones who have twisted the knife in my back so it's like you sit back and you be like and then you see them at family function it's like you you know we still family but we you're not friends and that's but, but i think i think in relationships any relationship cousins friends whatever um it's going to be some chaos. It's going to be some trials. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's can y'all be still friends and push through this, or is it cut off? But mm-hmm. I think with family, when family that component, when the when the family component is added, there's a higher, I guess, requirement of forgiveness. Mm. No, like I, I just think- here. Can we mm. get another recap of y'all's next when y'all did that? Go ahead, both of y'all. <laughs> Stretch them out. Yeah. Uh. Um, Uh, I think that um, sometimes we be so quick to cut family off, but not cut friends off. Mm. Mm. So I do think that um, I I think that we be a little harsh on our family more than we do our friends. Because I think I would give I I think. I think probably because it's more like you, you know, you feel like you're family, deeper, yo. Yeah. Like this it's blood, deeper. like you know what I'm saying, like. And then your friends, it's like, well, I'll give you another chance. <laughs> yeah, because it's almost like how how people hold a pastor to a higher standard. Like mm-hmm. you're my blood. There's no reason why you should do something to me that a person I didn't know my whole life would mm-hmm. do to me. Like the same mm-hmm. thing you said about like a friend, and then you hurt me like an associate would. If you, when your family does that, it's way worse. It hurts yeah, worse. Yeah, that's true. And that's, I guess, that's that component that just, it bothers me to the core. Because it's like, like okay, if a family member twists a knife in your back, it's like, if a friend do it, I'm like, well, it was a friend. You know, I mean, I ain't going to say it was expected, but I almost can accept it. But when a family member does it, you know what I'm saying, somebody you, like, literally share blood with. You know what I'm saying, and I'm, I sound damaged right now, don't I? I just it's I, okay. Let it I, out. I, I sound damaged right now. <laughs> hey, look, I, it, it is because I, I, it's been a couple situations. I won't lie that in my life where the family members that because if you knew my grandmother, you would be like, I can't believe how our family got to the point that it is right now. But yeah, it's been some some serious betrayal in our family, but. At the end of the day, like, you know, it is what it is at this point in the movie. Is you handing me tissue? <laughs> I was waiting on a tear to go in the beard. I didn't know if it was coming down or not. <sighs> she just handed me some tissue, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm sorry, my camera is having a little malfunction, but um, I do have a little uh, trickle of uh, moisture <laughs> running through my my eye right now. Like, I just want to tell everyone right now that. <laughs> So well, and then too though. Okay, go are ahead. you done? No, you no, wait, I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, um, but no, just I mean, like you said, seeing them at family functions, there's nothing wrong with speaking. Oh, what's up? And then keep it moving, like how you would speak to an associate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, you almost have to speak because if you don't, I feel like sometimes if you don't speak to a person, after you let them they, get away with yeah, it. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like if you don't speak, they know that you're still mad, and they could be somewhere ten years from now, like, ah, oh, he's still mad about that little betrayal whatever you know what i'm saying and it's like they try to make you the petty one right so i'll never let you do that to me like the one I, girl i see her all the time what's up i speak i think um sometimes people don't speak like sometimes it took me a minute to forgive the person that hurt me 
So I'm not going to go up to you and say hi and be fake. I want to fully believe that I forgive you. So you're going to have to wait till my healing come. So that's how I feel. Um, I don't just do the Christian thing. Oh, forgive them and then say hi and all that. No. If no. I'm not feeling high, I'm not saying hi because that's fake. <laughs> that's fake. It is. I want to truly feel it in my heart that I forgave this person. And when I get to that point, you cannot put a time on my healing. And when I get to that point, then I'll say hi to you. But other than that, I'm not just going to say, hey, you hurt me last week, but hey. No, I don't yeah, do that. I don't, I, don't, too I, don't, I don't do the fake stuff. Yeah. I want to fully believe that I forgive you. My thing be, it, it's almost like uh, when somebody owe you money. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom told me this as a young child. <clears throat> When somebody owe you money, they never forget that they owe you money. Every time you see them, every time they hear your name, they know that they owe you money. You allow them to forget. Mm. And that means a lot to me because it's like, basically, when somebody betrays you in a friendship or association or associate or whatever, your acceptance of like, hey, what's going on? How you doing? How your mom doing? Hey man, I'll see you next time. You almost giving them an out because now they can mm. be like, well, I guess we cool. Mm -mm. Well, that was a lot. Hey, how you doing? Hey, mama doing? I just had not. <laughs> <laughs> because, because my thing is this. For me, it's not in me to, I can't. I had this conversation because Danny was really trying to like push me to forgive this person because of business things or whatever. And I told her like, I'm the kind of person where if I, if we sit down and discuss it and I really forgive you. And I feel like you really mean what you're saying to me. Genuine. I'm going to let you completely back into my life because you were in there already. That history won't allow me to block you out. So I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of thinking I'm still upset because I'm not. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where I forgive you. I love you. But fuck you. Stay over there. So I speak. What's up? I feel but you. I, that's mm -hmm. all you'll ever get out of me. You can't see my kids. You can't come to my house. We can't go eat nowhere together. So the Don't one text girl me. that that betrayed you or whatever, do mm -hmm. do you still talk to her? Um, we we sat down one time, um, and uh, I, we tried to enjoy ourselves. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But for me, like <laughs> the story gets way messier because I did some petty shit back. <laughs> go ahead. What what did you do, Shane? Okay, so. Gosh, hopefully she ain't watching this because I don't got time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk, talk, talk to the world. So she slept with my, you know what I'm saying, the person that I was in love with. That's a piece of shit. You already know who that is. And um, Social security number, please. <laughs> I know it's social, too. Anyway, point is, <laughs> fa uh, if you fast forward, like, you know what I'm saying, a year and a half, two years, I saw somebody who was interested in me, and I found out after exchanging numbers with that person that that's a person that she was crazy about and would do mm -hmm. anything for. Oh, really? Let me show you why we was never playing the same game, honey. Not even in the same arena. Mm. So, my vow was to make him love me to prove a point. It was very childish. I was not over it because I never discussed it with her. I was still so hurt about what she did to me because mm -hmm. that person, like I couldn't get him to act right for shit. And he was my world. He was the first person I was into after my marriage. You know what I'm saying? So he was everything in the world to me. Tom used to be judging the hell out of me. Cause dude was, a, everybody thinks he's like this upstanding guy degree, all of this other little special shit. He ain't shit. So it, it was already Social like, he had been, number, <laughs> he had been doing a bunch of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Before it to be somebody that's close to me and you knew, you saw my kids on his page. You picked my kids up from the house with him there. How did you not know? Mm -hmm. You can't say you didn't know. It hurt me so bad. Like it could have been any of the other chicks that he was messing with. Okay. They, whatever. But how could you do this to me? And I was so hurt. I did it back mm -hmm. and it didn't make me feel any better. Like, talking to do like it didn't it didn't do anything for me and it made me realize like you know what that's so petty that's so childish like and so we came together she apologized you know what i'm saying and we hashed it out and i told dude i'm like i don't really don't have nothing to say to you because he kind of lied about their involvement anyway mm -hmm. but then like he kept trying to come around and make it seem like we had something going on still so like with her you know what i'm saying i know she felt some type of way because she thought that i was still dealing with him when i wasn't 
Mm. If that makes sense. Mm. So it's still like tension. When we see each other, it's still kind of tension. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there were some underhanded things that that I think she did and, you know, all that corny shit. And I don't have enemies for real, so I don't know how to handle having an enemy. So I would rather not. So I just don't even address all the other shit. I see you. Mm -hmm. We we do business in the same circles. So I could not speak to you and make it awkward and make it tense and throw us both off and throw our energies off. Now ain't nobody making money. It's not worth it. So I speak. Okay. Mm. That was a lot mm. of shit to tell people mm. on a podcast. <laughs> Listen, but I think though, I feel like we just had a breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Shayla just unloaded some stuff. No, I, I mean I already dealt with that. That stuff is old. I don't, it's not nothing to me. I am in a relationship. Everybody in, in love. Don't tell him that because whatever. <laughs> but I am happy. Okay, got my skin glowing. I am just out here. Just <laughs> listen. Who is this? Listen. Goodness, he got you hey, tiptoeing. But I think I've I've had issue with like girls growing up and stuff. Um, but I've I've noticed that it built me character. Mm. Mm. Yeah, gotcha. like Learn even how to deal with people. Like even yeah, even though you know you feel like he was a good friend, I would never say anything bad about that person. Never talk behind their back. Just show love, giving, and then somebody just you know screw you mm. over. But it built me character, and that's. I think that's where God wanted me to be um, because that's how Women With Purpose got started. Oh, God, Women With Purpose. Go ahead. Yes. Tell them about Women With women Purpose. Women With Purpose, okay. Why do y'all all, why do, <laughs> why do women do this? What is? What do that You mean? was just doing that. You literally was just you grabbing was just the air. Like, grabbing the air. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all like this. There is no, there is no. <laughs> You're grabbing air now. There was no visual. <laughs> there was no visual of said events. So, oh, okay. yeah. so go ahead, go ahead, but go ahead. But I, I, but I think it built me character to where God wanted me to be so I can serve my purpose so that I can have behind me the years of women stabbing me in the back, the years of me, some, some women that I didn't do right and talked behind their back, you know, just things that I went through the trials was preparing me for my purpose. And mm. so I have a women's group called women with purpose and it's basically to to love on other women, encourage them, support them. Because women, we we as women, we like to be bickering, we like to gossip, we like to talk about each other. And I know that with women getting together, something very powerful. And sometimes the devil will try and make us not get together because he know it's going to be something very powerful. So that is why I'm here, and have women with purpose. And um, <laughs> this this section of the show is brought to you by PBS. <laughs> But no, ah, no, I'm, I'm seriously, I, I, you know, I totally, I totally support what you're trying to do. Um, so if we, we proceed like with, you know, friends versus associates and I feel like, okay, so we have a problem. We have problems with this as adults and I can only imagine what our children go through mm. at school. So like, what would you really say to your kid? Cause th this is the problem. Like my daughter, my daughter, she'll be 11 in May and I've had to have this conversation with her multiple times about the girls she goes to school with. She she's so hurt when they do things and she feels like they're friends and I'm trying like and it's hard to tell a kid what an associate is, but we have to find a better way to talk to our kids about this because I feel like that we 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 expose them to this as a young age but we don't show them how to deal with it and they take this into adulthood. Mm -hmm. And now you got, like you said, like, you know, this problem with women and and women do have a problem like and so do men. But the communication between women, especially women of color, mm -hmm. like is it's bad. It's bad. You know, I know it is personally in my family. Like I have like what, eight, nine aunts and like they don't talk to each other. They don't love each other. They love each other because they're sisters, but they don't love each other. And. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's trickled down to the next generation and to the kids. So how do we show our kids how to, how to know what a real friend is and how to know what an associate is? I mean, your thoughts, your thoughts. Um, I just wanted to piggyback a little bit off of piggyback on it. off um, your aunts or whatever. I think we are so in our emotions and it's like, you got to step out of that. Like, 
when you think about things that's happening in somebody's life, that person can die tomorrow. Tomorrow. And you holding on to something that was happened when y'all was 11 and you peed in a bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. You got to set your emotions aside. Just like if, if somebody in your family have surgery. Oh, I ain't going to go see her. We don't talk. You know what I'm saying? What if she died on that bed and you never got a chance to see her or say goodbye to her? So, you know, it's like set our emotions aside and just, you know, be be family. And that's just. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But (laughs) Shayla, about the kids. (laughs) About the kids. About the kids, Shayla. Because you got kids. You got young kids. Like, what do you as a parent, how do you how do you talk to your daughters about this this type of topic? Because I know, you know, your daughter, she bossy. Go ahead. I don't know where she gets that from. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. Well, my daughter has had, you know, her her three friends. Um, they've been friends since the fifth grade. Uh, they leave her alone. Let the lady I'm be like great. She old camera, Listen, like you know. Tom what I'm got an old zero down here, and my nose run. I don't you care. Got a whole my leg hair grew back. Right. Whatever. Whatever. It did. It did. You did. He came down here looking like Wolverine. Never. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, um. She, you know, she has her fallouts with her friends um, and they make up and they, you know, it's not common that they fall out, but they do. Um, And I think for me, the simplest way to say it is if you really want to know a good friend, be one. That's mm-hmm. how you know what it looks like. But see, my because daughter has the exact opposite. Like my daughter is one of those. Oh, I'm, I can do whatever. My let me help you with your homework. My daughter is one of those giving people. Yeah. So she gets hurt. She okay. Gets, those are the ones that givers. Get, givers those attract the ones takers. That get hurt. Givers attract takers. I know that. But uh, I feel like you have to. If you have a kid that's like that, because none of my kids are like that. My kids are. Um, like my 11 year old is a serial friender. Like mm-hmm. she just told me that. Oh, my friend Jenna. Who, who is Jenna? Where did Jenna come from? You want to go to Miller South because Jenna going to Miller South? Who is Jenna? Mm-hmm. You know Jenna. I've been friends with her since third grade. You're in the fifth grade. I don't know that girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like my that's where they're at. They She hasn't reached the stage of betrayal yet. Mm-hmm. Um, So for her, I just try to tell her, don't give these people more than they're giving you. Mm-hmm. You can't do that now. You just can't. Everybody's not going to be your friend. And if you're pretty and smart and outgoing, and this is in general, this isn't even about friends, the world is going to suck you up yep. and spit you out. Mm-hmm. So you have to, you you can't go into everything guarded. You have to be open but aware. Mm-hmm. So for me, like, I try to tell her those things. And it's so hard because, like, especially my kids don't understand being black women. Mm-hmm. And that's the part that I'm trying to get them into now. Because I told you this before, I, I'm not raising just daughters. I'm raising somebody's wife, somebody's mother, somebody's friend. But you, you know, know what I mean? That, so, that accountability that you just, you know, by, a lot of women don't take that. Mm-hmm. They like, oh, I'm just raising my kids the best way I can. No, you are raising somebody's wife. You're raising somebody's boss, somebody's coworker, somebody's church leader. You, you're raising a, a human being that's going to go out in society and be somebody. Yeah. So you got to get your kids the type of skills and or prepare them mentally, physically, and emotionally for the life that they're about to yeah. have. Well, and that's another reason why I try to be as open as possible about who I am. Because I want my kids to learn from my failures the same way they learn from my success. So <clears throat> I don't have a problem having a conversation about this, that, or the third with my kids. You know what I mean? For example, right, right. like my daughter recently, she's friends with a girl who's bisexual. She's 11. And the girl told her, I don't know if I just like you or if I like you, like you. Yeah, she Most can't, people. She, she can't you know, come she to exit. the sleepover. See, and, and you see this? This, this is my <laughs> she, thing, though. This she is my can't thing. come to the sleepover. But this is my thing. It's not even about that because your daughter could go to somebody else's sleepover and then the girl is at the sleepover. Right. So it's about. That's why she don't go so, to none of them. Go ahead. Keep going. My shelter kids ain't going to them go no don't sleepover. help either, though. It don't, it because they're going to get in don't. college and be like, oh, I never went to a sleepover. Shit, this is co-ed. Wait a minute. So I, I said, I said, how do you feel about that? What do you mean, how do I feel about it? I was like. Did you like it when she said it to you? Do, you know, how do you feel about it? She's heard my oldest daughter talk about how one in four women are lesbian or bisexual. So when you have four daughters, one of them going to be gay. My oldest daughter always talks about this. So my daughter was like, she was like, I mean, she's like, I don't, I mean, she's cute, but I don't like girls. She's like, I'm not bi. I like boys. Okay. But I didn't go into it. What you mean that girl bi and she like you? What, what? 
you can't be friends with her. You can't this, you can't that. She's going to be curious about what it means to be bi, what it, it means to be gay. Now she's going to be looking at this girl's pictures. Even if she don't say it to me, it's going to be in the back of her mind. That girl likes me. She want to kiss me. I wonder how it is to kiss a girl. If you don't have an open conversation with your kids where they can come to you and talk about mm -hmm. friendships and things like that. She never had a conversation with my ex-husband. Hopefully he ain't watching this. He's going to be pissed. She would never have had a conversation with him because he would be like you. Shut that the fuck down. She's no, bleeded. No, she, I would, no, I you ain't want to no sleep on no, I wouldn't say, say it. Yeah. I wouldn't say it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, she but would. this girl don't even go to her school. This is the point. Like, because of friends of friends and uh, the, the kid version of social media, musically, and right, you know, right. stuff like that, there's they have access to other kids now. Mm -hmm. So now it's a bisexual girl at a different school that likes my daughter, that my daughter do talks to on a regular basis. So... Okay, you, you can be friends with whoever you want to be friends with. But let me tell you how to handle this. If you're not interested in her, if she make another comment, you got to just kind of be like, I like boys. You know what I'm saying? You, but, I, but I feel like it's real. Like, but I'm really I had proud to, of you right now. But I had to let her tell me how she felt about it. Because true. if she would have told me, well, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if I like her too or now we need to have a whole nother conversation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I can't have you out here pushing up on nobody's 11 year old straight daughter. Cause now I'm gonna have to fight their mama if they say something. You know what I mean? So like if, if it was my daughter, I'm just, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, I went, I went all off a topic kind of, <laughs> no, but it's, it was still on no, topic, you did. You I right. guess. You did. Yeah, you good, you good. You could. I'm, I'm just, just saying, what do you do if somebody come at your daughter like, oh, my daughter ain't allowed to be friends with you on no, you know what I'm saying? You doing this and that. Now I got to call somebody's mom like, but you know something you like, at? I think I, we're going to have to get into that show topic. <laughs> no, no, seriously. No, because, that would be a good show. No, topic. because it's like, like, you know, I was, I was recently out of town and, you know, I'm noticing more and more. I see, you know, transgender, small children. And I kind of feel like that's something you let them do maybe in middle mm. school. But I saw somebody who was like Not seven. Even mid, I don't even think middle school. Well, you don't even know who you well, are this, in middle school. Well, that's and this such an awkward It's stage. some people that don't know who they are ever. It, you're right. That's so true. it's it's a, a part. My uh, my spiritual dad, he has this saying that he used to tell me because he came over one time and I was pulling my hair out ready to kill my kids. And he was like, parenting is a fine line between, um, between chaos and oppression or oppression and freedom and oppression or some something like that he said and I, I understood at that moment like I started laughing because I was so frustrated at being a parent at that moment but there's a line so to me like and this would be a good full topic story but um like how these celebrities are letting their kids you know go transgender like Charlie Theron has that little black boy dressed like a little girl did y'all see that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um I feel like and this goes into like, especially if you're in, you know, you believe in God and you Christian and stuff, you're going to have a heart attack. If your four year old comes to you, somebody, I want to wear a dress. I want to be a girl. You know what I mean? But I think there's a line between if you're going to be one of those parents where you accept your child, no matter how they are, you can't do that at three or four years old when they don't know gender roles. They don't know, like you said, they don't know who they are, but you can't be like, no, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're a boy. Here's a truck. Until they're 13 and then be like, oh, okay, it's a middle school now. Oh, no. If my you son still was like little, it. My son was little and he would see me and his sister like putting on bras and he would be like putting a bra. On. I said, no, honey. Yeah. And see, that's and not that's not what boys do. Boys don't put that. But he was going by what he's seen. He's seen us putting on right. like a bra. Like he'll put it right right here. He was little. Right. And I was like, no, Jaden, you yeah, don't you do that. You just scarred him for life. <laughs> Whatever. But, no, but listen, people. no, but. <laughs> My boy is a, a boy. No, okay? I'm just saying he's watching but the he's, show. And he's he's like, not watching the show. I'm just told everybody I wear bra. bras. <laughs> like, Listen, he didn't line. put it on like a real bra, but he would like have it on like his arm yeah. and stuff. He was little. He was like, what, like three or something like right. that? And see, some, but with me teaching him that, he knew right then and there, oh, I can't wear this. This is for girls. You know what I'm saying? Like he would not stop. He would not put the bra back on. Right. And that's the difference between Charlie Stern being like, oh, put the bra on. Accept, I accept you for how you are. No, he's curious. He's learning. That's the age where they learn yeah. stuff. You don't let him wear. She, he got pink braids in his head. Why would you? I know as many of little boys who put on a mom's high heel. Yeah. It, not knowing. Curiosity. Like a little kid. They, like, they don't know. Now I'm not talking about like 12 putting on a high. I'm talking no. about a baby. Okay. So, so my. Okay. We, we off topic. But y'all gonna ride <laughs> with us. Listen. But see, my problem with the whole uh, transgender equal whatever thing is we already got 
a generation of bitch ass kids. Amen. So it's like we if we start letting these we already got boys that don't have, take no accountability. Like I used to be a great football coach. I quit coaching football because the kid like I had a kid who oh he hit me too hard. I don't want to play anymore. I'm like, if you don't get your son off this field, you know what I'm saying? It's like these kids are they the sense of entitlement. They already soft. They don't know nothing about accountability. Let me get this girl pregnant. I'm just going to bounce. And they like kids. And it's like, we already got these sorry generation of kids. And if we, we let this whole transgender thing, we're going to have a whole crazy generation. Oh of, yeah. I feel it, it coming. It's just, I feel it coming. I ain't going to even lie. I wake up in the middle of the night. It ain't gonna do nothing get, it's going to get worse. <laughs> mm, baby. You mm. know, wake up in the middle of the night. Mm. Well, no, I think too, like for my daughter, if she would have said like, if she would have been the girl, like my, I think I like girls. This is going to sound terrible. You got to try a boy for you tell me you don't like that <laughs> shit. <laughs> dick is amazing. I'm sorry. Can I say dick? Am I allowed to say dick time? I mean, to an 11 year old, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about on your podcast. How saying, I raise my children, how I raise my children. They're going to hear it. They might as well hear it from me. Listen. But, but that's just how I feel. Like, I don't feel like you, like, like, for example, the way I explain people being gay in my family to my kids when they see, oh, my God, two boys just kissed. Or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Something like that. And I'm just like, some some boys like other boys. Some girls like other girls. We don't do that. Mommy likes boys. Your daddy is a boy. We got married. We had you. This is how that works. But if you decide later that you don't want that, you can decide that later. Like, I got to be as open as I can. I can't be like. Oh, heavens, hide their face. They're going to see that shit everywhere. Well, yes, well everywhere. guys, um, first off, hey, I want to thank all the people. Like, we got a ton of <laughs> comments today. Like, uh, I want to thank uh, Frederica, Carla, Paul, Shy Shy, Katika. Like, all the comments that came in. Brittany, uh, today, Dante, everybody, thanks for leaving comments. Please share um, the post and the live stream on your page and just get everybody watching the show. But um, we're, we're at the end of another great show. It went by so quickly, and we 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 will be back next week. Um, I don't know what the topic going to be. We Maybe we jump into that. Maybe we can get into that. That is a good topic yeah, to have. Maybe we so, get into yeah. that. I don't. It's like it's so touchy. We're probably going to offend a whole bunch of people. Facebook going to be knocking on my door. Like, it's your door. It ain't yeah, mine. You got hey, a gun? Yeah. You can borrow yeah, mine. Yeah, I am strapped. Definitely oh, okay. strapped. So, look, so I want to thank everybody for calling. I mean, well, we ain't getting no cars. We never even got to that point. But everybody who watched <laughs> the show left a comment, share the post. Um, we're running out of time. Anybody got a quick thought before we get out of here? No, I don't. I talked my hair dry. I don't even. You talked your <laughs> hair dry. Okay. I just want to thank everybody for watching the After Dinner Snack. Uh, we'll be back next yes, week, Monday thank at 830. You. Um, please go on our Facebook wall, share all our past shows, uh, listen to the podcast. We're on Stitcher. We are now on, what's the other one, the big one? Uh, Spotify. We're on Spotify now. So that's pretty big for us. Trails trying to get this iHeartRadio thing locked out. But um, thanks for watching the show, and we will be back next week. Bye. Peace.